Well, it's a little foggy this morning. And a little noisier, actually. I think uh, the lifting fog reflects the sound, amplifies it. So, yeah, you can hear the, the, the cars in the distance there. Ah, it was, it's great now that I can actually sleep in the cabin. Uh, it wasn't a bad sleep. It was a little, it kind of rained in the middle of the night, but uh, it was it was good. It was good that I've got to the point that I could actually stay at least at night in the cabin. However, that leads to another problem because I have a daily morning routine where uh, I typically get up and I have some bran or oatmeal and a strong coffee, and that sets me for the day, and it gets my system going rather quickly. And that kind of leads to a new problem because within like 20 minutes, nature calls. Listen. It's time to take a dump. And I'm not really set up for that right now. Um, I mean, let's face it, guys can pee anywhere. But that second one is a little bit of a challenge. And now that I have the bedroom, I guess I know what's second on my list. Which one is number two? I gotta get my <laughs> together. So what is compost? It's biologically decomposed organic material used to improve soil quality. So I think the first step in solving this number two problem is not building a device to do it in, it's building somewhere to dispose of it later on. And I'm thinking this area right here, which has this slight dip, it's, it seems something might have been here in the past. I think this would be a good spot for a compost bin. It's at a reasonably good location, uh, open air. Um, it should get, uh, you know, circulation. It gets a little bit of sunlight and uh, it's, it's near a walking path, so it should be easy for me to get here. So, I think what I need to do is get a shovel and see if I can really dig it. The soil around my cabin is pretty poor quality, dry and full of rocks. It needs more than a shovel to break it up. I had to pick a heat wave to do this. Oh, I'm so hot and sweaty. But anyway, the digging is done more or less. I still have to put a, like a little dimple in the bottom. But the next part, I think is a little bit easier. Now there's nothing I read that says you need to hinge this. I just thought it would be a good idea. Not fancy, but it'll work. Well there, I got my own compost bin now. And it's pretty sturdy. It's a big size. I got lots of room to put lots of smelly stuff in there. But there's other compost materials I need to deal with as well. So I'll get to that later on. 
Now the best part of this is the price. This whole thing cost me absolutely nothing. It was free. The pallets I got from a building place, uh, you know, building supply, they're dying to get rid of them. Uh, I even recycled some screws and some nails and some hinges. And that's it. The rest was just my sweat and I got lots of sweat to get rid of anyway. Now I'd love to say that this idea was my own brilliant idea, but it wasn't. And I've got to give credit where credit's due. I purchased a book by Joseph Jenkins and it's called The Compost Toilet Handbook. And uh, it's absolutely brilliant. It's filled with ideas how to make your own toilet, compost bin. And what I really like about this guy is not only has he been doing it for a long time, he knows what he's talking about, but he helps others, especially in third world countries, you know, that really need the help. So he understands people that don't have the resources or the money. And uh, uh, it's just brilliant. Pick up this book, well worth reading, and I'm using it as a basis for this video. Now that I have the compost bin, you'd think the next thing I'd want is the toilet. But not yet, because I still have to have a place to put the toilet. And the bathroom, well, it's just not looking good right now. Let me show you. I'll take you through the sliding doors of the deck. And here's the main cabin. That's the bedroom door. And this one is for the bathroom. However, it's kind of a disaster in here. Stuff all over the place, all over the floor. No room for a little toilet. So I think there's a little cleanup to do before I can make it my sit down room. Now as for the compost toilet, you can make it as simple or complicated as you want. I mean, some people don't even bother. They just take a pail and they put a pool noodle around the rim and they're good to go. But if it's for a cabin and you want it to be comfortable and you want other people that might be at the cabin comfortable, you might want to just go a little further than that. And that's what I intend to do. But the first thing you got to start off with is finding a suitable bucket. Now this one here is about, let me just see, 16 inches high. Now a typical toilet in your home is probably around 18 inches. So anything say 16 to 20 inches is probably fine for the final height. This should be good. It gives me enough room to, uh, to put a box around. And uh, yeah, this is just, it was kicking around. I used it for my rusty nails, <laughs> which is why, why it's got those brown spots in there. No, I didn't try it out already. That's rust from the nails. But I think this would be good for a, a basis of it. This is what I'm going to carry the stuff out. Now to build stuff around it, I'm going to use as much recycled materials as possible. So I've got these four pieces here that will be the four structural parts as well as the legs. Now I, I pre-cut these before I got out here. I didn't want to have to mooch electricity today. I can just use my battery operated drill and that'll be fine. So I cut these out. There's a hole for the center. This is the top. And back here is four pieces of that uh, ceiling board. Um, reused it, should be fine. And my only luxury in this, now I could totally make this for free, absolutely free. I could even make the lid. However, you know, if I'm gonna make this myself and I'm gonna start sanding and cutting and it's probably gonna take me two days to make it, why not just buy the darn thing? So I went to a Walmart and I bought the, uh, the toilet seat and it's wood of course, fits in with the theme and that way I don't have to spend extra time. Uh, and I also, I guess I could buy used, but you know, buying a used toilet seat is like buying used underwear. I'm sure it'll, it'll do the purpose, but uh, you know what? I feel comfortable getting something that doesn't have a history, if you know what I mean. So those are the basic components. Now I just gotta get out my drill wherever I put it and see if I get all the, the dimensions right. 
So what is a compost toilet anyway? You may be surprised, as a compost toilet does not produce compost. It is merely a holding tank for body waste to be composted later on in a compost bin. Now before you get out your tools and start building your own compost toilet, please check with the local state or community bylaws. In some places, they'll only issue a permit if a regular flush toilet is also installed, which kind of defeats the purpose. Now later on I made this piece a little thinner so there was less of a gap between the seat and the pail. You don't want to make an opportunity for spillage. Now you probably wouldn't be impressed if that was the final result. So I went ahead and improved the design. Well here it is, my very first compost toilet. And uh, you know what? I don't think it looks too bad. It started off a little rough because I was using that particle board and it looked kind of ugly. But as I started making it, I got new ideas about how to uh, improve it as well as uh, how to reuse more materials. And so I took that particle board and I had some wood paneling that was in the, in the cabin I was no longer using. And I think I just glued that on and it looks a lot better just by using that wood paneling. And as far as the top, this is a very like a smooth wipeable surface you'd find like on a countertop or in a bathroom. Again, it was something I was going to throw out, put it on, it'll make this compost toilet a lot easier to clean. Now, there's a few notes about the lid. This is a conventional lid for a conventional toilet. However, they typically rely on a toilet that has a back. And what I found out in using this, because the compost toilet doesn't have a back, it would just fly back too far and probably break the hinge. So what I had to do is put a stopper right here. This is just a little piece of wood and it just stops right there. It just sits back. Now, as far as the hole, and I should have mentioned, this is called the round toilet seat. Um, there are ones that are more elongated, but the problem with a longer toilet seat is you'd need a longer and a bigger pail and you're very limited as to the pail size as well as height. So, got to use a small one or uh, you might have a few problems. Now, as far as the front, this just comes down. See, that's still the particle board. I put two hinges on the bottom and I put Velcro on the top. Now, knob right there and that holds it in place. To remove the pail, you just slide it out. And uh, one more thing. To make sure when you put the pail back, it doesn't go too far, I've just got a 2x4 I keep on the back wall, and that way it always goes back to the perfect distance. And that's it. I think it's going to work well. I'm almost inspired to try it. But not yet.
Using pallets to make a compost bin is a easy and free idea. I love it. However, it does have its challenges because these particular pallets have these big gaps in between. And I'm worried because I'm going to be using pine needles as part of the compost, it's just going to fall out the sides. So what I'm going to do is I've, I've trimmed some branches off uh, some trees and I'm just going to stuff the branches around the edge. That'll give it a little bit more support and it might actually keep the animals out of here as well. So let's give it a try. Now I think I'd call this a win-win situation because I'm taking branches which I would have had to burn and reusing them for something useful. So because not only are they helping to keep the contents of the bin inside the bin, they're probably going to keep out some of the larger rodents and even if these branches and these needles break down, well they're already in the compost bin, so I love solutions like this. Well there, got her all covered. Now I did make one modification. The uh, pallet for the door, I put another board underneath so that I could put the branches in and they wouldn't just fall out the bottom. A little bit more secure. But hey, I think that'll at least help a bit in keeping and containing the compost in the compost bin. And hey, if it doesn't work out as a compost bin, maybe I can use it as a nature blind. Well, I finally cleaned out this room. It's almost a bathroom. And I guess because it has a toilet in it right now, it is a bathroom. Yeah, it needs a little decorating, but we'll get to that. Now, the first thing I notice when I sit on this toilet is I made a little bit of an error because my feet aren't actually touching the ground. I made it an inch too high, so I'm gonna have to trim it down a little bit. I think about 18 inches is probably the best height for me, but now I know. Now, over on the side here, I have my cover material. And the first one is sawdust. Oh, that smells so good. Fresh sawdust right from the mill. It's free. They are so happy to get rid of it, they even bagged it for me. So I've got a source of that. And in behind here are the pine needles. And I got tons of that as well. I'm not sure which one is the best. I'm probably actually going to use them both. Um, I know sawdust is highly recommended and the only issue I probably am going to have with the pine needles is they're going to take longer to decompose. To set up your toilet for the first contribution, you add a generous amount of cover material. I started off with a few pine needles, but the bulk of it for now is the sawdust. When you have at least an inch or two as a base, mix it up a little, and then you're ready to drop the bomb. Well, I think I have all the materials I need. All I need now is a little inspiration. And I've got just the book to inspire me. Okay, there are two other things. Drop your pants and clear your mind. Well, this is definitely a good read, and it certainly gives a lot better definition of compost than the Webster's Dictionary, because by definition, compost has three essential components. The first one is human management. It doesn't just break down well by itself. It needs help by us. The second is the generation of internal biological heat. The bacteria and the micro microorganisms, they 
heat up by themselves, but they need a lot of heat to actually work. And that's why like the toilet itself is not a good composting unit. It needs a larger area and a lot more heat. And that's what the compost bin is for. And three is aerobic organisms that thrive in the presence of oxygen. Now, when I think of aerobic organisms, I think of Jane Fonda and Richard Simmons, but there are other aerobic organisms as well, and that's the bacteria that are doing their business here. They get their oxygen from the, the cover materials because that puts little air pockets in, which help the bacteria thrive and do their business. Now, as far as doing business, I'm hoping I'm going to be able to do a little business soon, or I could be waiting here a long time. Now, with all this talk on compost toilets and composting, I forgot to tell you about the distinct advantages of a compost toilet over other systems. And the first one is it does not require water. It, there is no requirement of water and there's also no requirement to separate the pee and the poo. It can all go together. It works fine together. Because you don't need water, especially clean drinking water, I mean, who came up with this concept? We make so much effort to put clean drinking water in our homes and then we poop in it. <laughs> I mean, seriously, we're twisted. You don't need water, therefore you don't need plumbing. And you also don't need a sewage system or a septic tank. You've got the compost toilet and you've got the compost bin. That's it. Uh, but the other thing you don't need is electricity. There's no pumps, there's no generators. So not only is the setup really inexpensive, and especially if you make your own compost toilet and compost bin, you can do it for next to nothing. You can do it for free, and if you want to jazz it up, you can spend a few bucks. But the other thing is, not only is the setup low cost, but your monthly bills are lower because you're not, you're not using that water, you can use it for something else, and you're not using the electricity, so, and, and no sewage system, so it's win-win. The best part is you're taking something that is not good for the environment, and you're converting it to something that is. All that pee and poo is going to be good fertilizer. Mother Nature's gonna love you. Now, there is one other thing, because you don't need the plumbing and you don't need to plug anything in, your toilet can go anywhere. Now, you could be inspired to take it on a picnic or to sit by the campfire, or perhaps while sunning on a beach or skipping rocks by the shore. Hey, Bill, how you doing? Car's looking great. Or just while being friendly with the neighbors. Uh, this isn't working. I mean, I usually have a coffee and bran in the morning, but uh, I can't have a second coffee. It'll keep me awake at night. So maybe I'll try another beverage instead, like this beer. And uh, hey, why not go for something else, like uh, perhaps chocolate ice cream cone with corn, flavor of the month? I think these should get things going. Why not? The only problem is I'm kind of balanced up here and I'm holding a beer and I'm holding an ice cream cone. I hope I don't drop anything. Whoa! No! Oh no! I spilled my beer and I lost my ice cream. You know, the ice cream I can deal with, but spilling my beer? That scared the s*** <laughs> out of me. Hey, success! We're there! After taking care of business, add a few scoops of cover material, and you're all set until next time. Plan on emptying it out at least once a month. Now let's face it, it's going to take me a long, long time to fill up that little bucket, let alone fill up the compost bin. So in the meantime, I'm going to use it for other things like kitchen waste and lawn waste because I've got a ton of it. All those needles. But do check back because I'm sure I'm going to do an update. 
I hope you enjoyed this video and check out my others as well.